The Mariana Trench is located in the Western Pacific Ocean and it is the deepest oceanic trench on Earth. The Mariana Trench was very much unexplored until quite recently, and that is due to the extreme environment that it hosts. Full of darkness, immense pressure, and a ton of animals that have unbelievable features that have allowed them to adapt to these environments, the Mariana Trench remains one of the most mysterious places on Earth, and we are learning more about it each day. That is all why on today's life's biggest questions, we are going to be diving into the top 10 weirdest things found in the Mariana Trench. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Mariana Snailfish. The Mariana Snailfish is a fish that is found quite deep in the Mariana Trench in a range of 6,198 to 8,076 meters deep, or 20,335 to 26,496 feet. This was an important catch too, because because it gave researchers a chance to get a look at and further their understanding of what anatomical, physiological, molecular, and genetic adaptations are required for animals who make their home in this extreme environment. Some of the adaptations seen in this fish are things like their transparent skin that lacks pigment, they have certain organs and eggs that are enlarged, their muscles are thinner, and it seems as though they have either little or no ability to see, which makes a lot of sense considering how dark their habitat is. This obviously means that they must hunt for their prey using other senses to detect any movement around them. In our number 9 spot today we have the Dumbo Octopus. Dumbo octopuses love to live in the deep sea at depths of at least 13,100 feet or 4,000 meters, which makes the Mariana Trench a perfect home for them. The Dumbo Octopus is not just one species, but rather a genus, and they are actually the group of deepest living octopuses in the world, but they are also quite rare. These guys were named after the Disney movie Dumbo because of the fact that they have ear-like fins that resemble Dumbo the elephant. They are foraging predators who like to eat pelagic invertebrates that swim just above the sea floor, and they use their ear-like fins to swim while they use their arms to steer. Unfortunately, despite how cute they are, like all animals, the Dumbo octopus has predators it has to look out for. Their predators include things like tunas, sharks, and dolphins, and since the Dumbo octopus lives so deep in the ocean, they are rarely ever accidentally captured in fishing nets, so human activities aren't too much of a threat to them, which is always great news. In our number 8 spot today we have the zombie worm. These worms were first discovered in 2002 when they were living in the bones of a carcass of a dead whale nearly 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters deep in the ocean. The reason these guys have the common name zombie worm is because of the fact that their main food source is those same bones that they were first found living in. These guys love to eat bones, but in their own special way because of the fact that they don't have mouths or stomachs. Instead, they secrete an acid from their skin that dissolves the bones, which frees up the fat and proteins that are trapped inside. The worms then have their symbiotic bacteria that lives inside of them digest the fat and the protein. Here's the thing though, we actually don't know how the nutrients from the bacteria get to the worm. They either digest the bacteria somehow, or there's some sort of process where the nutrients get transferred. While when they were first found, they were chowing down on whale bones, zombie worms are happy to eat any kind of bone that they can come across, and they've actually been observed making a meal out of non-aquatic animal bones that somehow ended up in the deep sea. In our number 7 spot today we have the barrel eye. If you haven't seen a barrel eye fish before, get ready to have your mind blown because it is insane to me that a creature that looks like this exists on our earth. See what I mean? Barrel eye fish, which are also known as spook fish, are a collection of fish which all feature very large telescoping eyes that protrude from the head, but that are enclosed in a large transparent dome of soft tissue. These fish are relatively small and are usually found motionless, just hanging out in their preferred depths of somewhere between 600 to 800 meters or 2,000 to 2,600 feet in the ocean. The discovery of this species first came in 1939, but it wasn't until recently in 2000. And four, when someone was actually able to capture a photo of one so that the whole world could see this insanely interesting looking creature. Unfortunately, once taken out of their natural high pressure environment, their fluid filled heads just can't stand our environment up here, so it is definitely better if we just let them be safe and sound in their open home. In our number six spot today, we have the football fish. 
The football fish belongs to the family of anglerfish and they get their name because of the fact that they are shaped like a football. The females of this species are not only significantly larger than the males, but they are also the ones who carry the bioluminescent lure on their heads, which sways back and forth waiting to lure in an unsuspecting prey. Once their prey gets close enough, they will shoot out bioluminescent liquid that will act to temporarily blind the prey so that the football fish can go ahead and swallow it whole. The female of the species can grow to be around 60 centimeters or 24 inches, while the males do not grow larger than 4 centimeters or 1.5 inches. In order to mate, the males will bite onto the females and wait until their skin fuses together. From here, they are now stuck together, but it allows the male the opportunity to fertilize the eggs and thus, more little football fish. In our number 5 spot today, we have the owlfish. Owlfish are a species of deep sea black smelt that get their common name from the fact that they have eyes that are almost as large as their heads. These guys are a fairly common deep sea fish, which obviously means that they are enjoying and doing well in their environment in the depths of the Mariana Trench. These guys can even be found at depths of around 19,685 feet or 6,000 meters. The owlfish's large eyes are definitely part of the reason they have been able to thrive in their deep sea environment, and that is because of the fact that the the eyes are able to capture even the most faint glimmer of light, even in the darkest depths of the Mariana Trench. This helps them spot and capture their prey, which is usually things like small crustaceans and jellies, and it also helps them make sure that they don't become the prey. In our number 4 spot today, we have spoonworms. Spoonworms are a small group of marine animals that live in burrows in the soft sediment or in rock crevices or under boulders. There are shallow water versions of these guys, but today of course we are talking about the deep sea variety. The spoonworm is a soft bodied cylindrical animal that is usually seen with a non retractable proboscis, which is an elongated appendage that comes off the head of the animal. While, like I just mentioned, the spoonworms is non retractable, they do have the ability to roll it into a spoon like shape in order to feed, which is of course where their common name comes from. These guys are deposit feeders who like to eat the organic material off of the sea floor, and while different members of the spoonworm family family can live at different temperatures, the Mariana Trench variety can clearly withstand the icy cold temperatures. The spoonworm also varies in size quite a bit, with some measuring less than a centimeter or 0.39 of an inch, and some growing to be over a meter or 3.2 feet in length. In our number 3 spot today, we have the deep sea lizard fish. These guys are a small family of fish that are most closely related to the telescope fish, and they like to live at a depth of somewhere around 1,600 meters or or 5,200 feet, which puts them on the list for one of the deepest living apex predators. They grow to be around 78 centimeters or 31 inches, which makes them a pretty moderately sized fish, and they have a flat head with scary, curved, barbed teeth, which definitely helps with their whole predator persona. These guys are also vicious as they will eat anything that comes in their way, and that even includes other fish of their own kind. Deep sea lizard fish throughout the years of evolution have been able to adapt to their harsh environment as well as their low population density in a few ways. First, to do with the low population numbers, deep sea lizard fish all have both male and female reproductive organs, which allows them more opportunities for reproduction. The other cool thing that shows how they have adapted to their habitat is how they have large eyes with large pupils. This is because they have quite good eyes that allow them to see any residual or bioluminescent light that you don't get often in the deep, dark Mariana Trench, and this is of course super important for their prey detection abilities. In our number 2 spot today, we have basket stars. Basket stars are like the Mariana Trench cousin of starfish, and when you see them, you can totally understand why. These guys have that same main kind of disc that you see on a starfish, but rather than 5 short, stiff arms, these guys have 5 long, slender, flexible arms that all branch out from themselves repeatedly to form even more tiny little arms, with the last branch usually ending up curled. There's no real rhyme or reason for the shapes of basket stars, as it just depends on how they grow, so while some look beautiful and almost like a webbing of lace, there are some that look absolutely chaotic. You know what they say, no two basket stars are the same. 
I don't think anyone has ever said that, but we're gonna start. Basket stars are able to navigate around the sea floor by wiggling their arms around. They also have the ability to curl into a ball when they're feeling threatened by predators. They also do eat as they have a mouth located on the underside of their disc, and they prefer to eat things like krill, small crustaceans, and zooplankton. We have made it all the way to our number one spot with sea pigs. These guys are a genus of deep sea sea cucumbers, and they have enlarged tube feet that appear kind of like little legs. They move through the top layer of sediment on the seafloor as they scavenge for their next meal as they eat by extracting organic particles from the deep sea mud. They like to live at depths of around 1,200 to 5,000 meters or 3,937 to 16,404 feet and they have been seen to have a strong preference for rich organic food that has freshly fallen from the surface of the ocean. Sea pigs tend to measure somewhere around 15 centimeters long or four to six inches, and they have their own natural defense mechanism, and that is the fact that their skin contains a toxic chemical that is poisonous to other creatures, making it a dangerous meal to attempt. Sea pigs are also known to host different parasitic invertebrates, but sometimes the relationship is commensal. Like, sometimes they like to provide shelter for juvenile crabs, which really benefits the crab because it keeps them safe from predators by having a nice little homey shelter. Sea pigs are another one of those creatures that is designed specifically specifically for the deep sea environment, and unfortunately, when brought up to the surface, they disintegrate. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.